everybody and welcome to year two. Unfortunately, Mrs Brown isn't feeling very well and has lost her voice, so I'm going to present the year two Meet the Teacher presentation to you. As lots of you know, my name is Miss Devine and our other year two teacher is Mrs Brown. In year two, we are made up of both class teachers, so myself and Mrs Brown, and our teaching assistants are Mrs Hodges, Mrs Hill, Mrs McIver and Miss Durbin. And then their shine coach who teaches them PE on a Thursday evening is called Lily. And lots of your children will now be familiar with Lily from their PE sessions that they have had in the first couple of weeks. Just a quick reminder that our drop-off times in year two are between 8.45 and 10 past nine. We do ask if your child does not have an older or a younger sibling, if they could arrive between our nine and nine ten slot. So that we're reducing the number of adults that are on site and you'll have noticed that there is some tape we do ask that adults could please stay behind the tape when they are dropping their children off to school our ppa which is our time for us to do our planning is every wednesday afternoon so myself and mrs brown are out of class on wednesday afternoon and during that time they will both have a session with mrs marsden and then following that they will have a session with shine so every Wednesday we ask that children can come into school dressed in their PE kit, which could consist of a jumper, their house colour t-shirt, leggings or joggers, and we do ask that all of these items could be named. Our PE day is also on a Tuesday, and PE is now taking place every other week. So for example, if 2D were doing PE next Tuesday, 2B would be doing PE the following Tuesday. So we're alternating the week, so every other Tuesday, and we will communicate with you via our WhatsApp groups just to send those reminders about when PE is taking place, so don't worry. Quickly to go through lunches, for school meals, continue to book them on on the usual way, and at the moment, children are eating their lunch in the classroom. So we have school dinners brought to us, and if your child has a packed lunch, they will also eat in the same room. So to start with, maths in year two. So during our time in year two, we will cover the following objectives. So we begin in September with place value, and this is where we look at how numbers are made. And we look at numbers up to 99, and we look at how we could partition those numbers, which means how we can split those numbers up. We move on to addition and subtraction, followed by multiplication and division. 2D and 3D shape, symmetry and pattern, fractions, measurements, positions and direction and statistics. And they will cover all of these objectives throughout the year. Some of these objectives we may cover more than once throughout the year as well. Just to let you know, we are going to upload this presentation onto the school website so that you can look at your, yourself if I'm going through some of the slides a little bit too quick. So how we do maths in year two is we cover it in three stages and we start with what we call the concrete stage and this is where we will use objects and practical resources. So we might have counting objects out on the tables, we use number strings, we use the deans, we use lots of different visual equipment for the children to have it visually in front of them and we start that with what we call the concrete stage. Once the children are secure with using those concrete objects, we move on to what we call pictorial. So this is where they will use drawings to represent the objects that they have. So if we were starting with the concrete objects of the deans, when we take the concrete objects away, we go on to moving to the pictorial where they will draw the deans themselves to help them work out a calculation. For example, if we were looking at how we could partition the number 56, to start with, the children could have the deans out and count how many tens and how many ones. Once they're secure with that, they would move on to the pictorial where they could draw the five tens and the number of ones for that number. Once they're secure with that, we then move to the abstract. So this is where they're knowing it straight away without having to use any of the concrete objects and without having to draw them. So we go through math in those three different stages. So just as I mentioned before, you can see that we've got some pictures of the deans here. We've got Numicon, sorting objects. We will use number lines 
and feed strings. And these are just a few of some of the examples that we use to make sure children have a secure understanding and that concrete understanding before we move on. Followed by an app like I spoke about previously, they'll have their understanding of calculation, for example. So when we move on to addition of two two-digit numbers, the children can draw the deans to represent the numbers. And we can see they've got 23 add 34. So they've drawn the correct number of 10 and the correct number of 1s, and they've added them together to get their total of 57. And we can also use these pictorial drawings for subtraction. As you can see, they've started with 45 and subtracted 23 by crossing out two tens and three ones to get their answer. When we move on to multiplication and division, we teach multiplication through what we call arrays. So we can see we've got four times three equals 12, or three times four equals 12. And they draw their arrays, and they can alternate between how they draw their arrays and how they would like to represent them. At the moment, it doesn't matter how the children draw their arrays. It doesn't matter which way round they do it, as long as they're getting the correct answer and they can explain the array that they have drawn. We teach division in two different ways, and we teach division through what we call grouping, where you can see we've put them into groups of two, and we also teach division through sharing, and we teach both of these different ways for division, and the children can use whichever one they feel most comfortable with. It doesn't matter which one they use to find their answer, it's down to the child and what suits them and what they have understood the most. So when we come on to the abstract, that's about them being able to have those known numbers back and work them out instantly. And that's what we also work on when we have our maths planets every Friday. And they are based on all of those known number facts to help the children speed up and get that really good understanding to be able to work out different number sentences instantly. Then we move on to the stage in which we call mastery. And this is when the children can apply their knowledge to a variety of problems and questions. So for example, we have some missing number questions here. So we've got, tell me two numbers that would equal the total of 19. And then it also moves on to how can you find three different numbers that we would add together to get to the total of 19. Some further missing number questions here as well. And that mastery is about the children being able to be presented with questions that look different they need to apply the same skill, but they are presented in different ways. And that's what we mean by mastery. In terms of maths planets, these will be continuing to take place every Friday. And the children will be continuing with their maths planets on where they left over in year one. Children on the move will then move on to practice year two maths planets. So they do not have to go through year one moons. If they've got to the moon stage in year one, they will move straight on to level 1A of the year two maths planet. If your child is finding a particular level quite difficult, we will write in their homework book some examples of questions so that you know how you can help and support them at home. And please do ask us for help if you're not sure how you can support them and we will give you different ways as to how you can practice maths planets at home. And then lastly, in terms of maths, just a few other ways as to how you can help. A big one that we cover in year two is when we come to look at money. So when you're out and about with your children, maybe not so much now as we're not using much money at the moment, it tends to be more card payments, but getting them to recognise different coins. If you're in a shop, seeing if they can notice what the price of different items are when they're in the shop. If you are paying by cash, it's a good opportunity for your children to have the opportunity to pay for different items in their shops, asking them how much change they think they're going to get back, and the difference between pounds and pence. And then another big one is time. So in year two, we have a look at, at analogue clocks, and it'd be really useful if you've got a, any clocks at home, or if the children have a watch, that they will learn to tell the time to quarter two. So we learn o'clock, quarter past half past and quarter two. And then lastly, Math Shed. Your children should have received their login for Math Shed last year. And to get those known number facts, Math Shed is an excellent resource to use at home. 
So we come on to English and it, writing in year two. So to start with reading, in year two we start our guided reading sessions with a carousel. So the children will take part in different activities throughout the week. We have sent the children home with their reading records already and inside their reading records there should be a sticker which tells you which day they need to bring their guided reading books in and which day they need to bring their library books in to be changed. Just to let you know, we are quarantining any books that do come back in, so just in case you're concerned when they're coming from other people's homes, we are quarantining them for 72 hours before they're handed out elsewhere across the school. And we do ask that at home, if you could make sure you have got clean hands, so just washing them or hand sanitising before you do handle any of our reading books, we would really appreciate that. We're continuing with the reading bug challenge like we do across the school. So just to remind you, children will get a certificate for every time they do 10 reads at home. Once they've read for a multiple of 50, they get to go and choose a book from Mr. Winsburn. And children can read the guided reading books that we send home, their library books, and also any other books that you do have at home is really good so that children are exposed to lots of different texts. And we do ask that children do read at least five times a week, even if it's just for five or ten minutes before they go to bed or when they get up in the morning, whatever time best suits you. But we do ask if you could try and get them to read at least five times a week. So these are just a few of the different reading objectives that we cover. So we have a look at vocabulary where we discuss the meaning of new words. So if we're reading a book in guided reading and we come across a word we're not sure what it means, we would read it in the sentence and find out the context of that word. Can we work out what, what that word might mean and have a discussion around it? Recognition of any language patterns in a type of text. Then we go on to word reading, so being able to recognise alternative sounds. For example, chew and shoe, they sound the same but different spellings. Being able to read accurately and fluently with expression and being able to read words that contain suffixes at the end. Then we have a look at what we call response. So this is where we might get the children to highlight a type of text to find key information, being able to use titles and pictures and blurbs to find certain information in a book, being able to scan over a text to locate some information quickly, predicting what we may happen in the story and being able to answer questions based on what has happened in the text. So for example, these are some different questions that you could ask your children whilst reading. I'm just going to choose a few and like I said, this will be up on the website for you to have a look at. So you might want to ask your child what their favourite part was and why, what was the main event that happened in the story, or what do they think is going to happen and why, and how do they think the character feels and why. So you can stop at different parts throughout the story and ask some of these key questions. As some of you are aware already, in year one, the children are supposed to undertake what we call a phonic screening check. Obviously, due to lockdown, this was unable to happen whilst your children were in year one. And the government have recently introduced that in 2020, the children are going to be taking part in a phonic screening check in year two. And this is going to take place during term two. So when we come back after the October half term, it is going to take place in term two. Children who do not pass the check will then resit it at the end of year two alongside the current year one cohort. This is made up of 40 different words. Some of these words will be real words and some of them will be alien words. And the children are asked to sound each word out and then blend it together. And it's really important that they are sounding it out and blending it so that whoever is assessing them can understand that they are able to sound out the different sounds that we have taught in our phonics session. But if you have any further questions about this, do just come and ask us. In terms of writing, the children will write a range of different genres throughout the year. So some examples are some stories. So currently we are studying the traditional tale of Little Red Riding Hood and at the end of our unit, the children will rewrite the story. They will write some sets of instructions, recounts, poetry, information texts, and also some letters. So a wide range of different texts. 
throughout the year. And some of those objectives that we cover are full stops and capital letters, different types of punctuation. We've got question marks, exclamation marks, commas, and we also introduce speech marks. Being able to join sentences with conjunctions, so they are words such as and, but, and so. Different types of sentences such as commands, statements, and then we go on to adjectives, verbs, and nouns as well throughout the year. Spelling is also another big focus, and in your child's homework book, they should have the term one spellings overview, and this will show you what spellings they are covering each week and what sound that week is focusing on. However, we also have the year two common exception words, and these are those tricky words that the children can't sound out, and unfortunately, they just need to be able to recognise them and also spell them in year two. We have spelling inputs built into our English lessons, and this is where we do cover these tricky exception words, and we do some spelling inputs based on that week's sound as well. We also have a look at different spelling patterns, such as double consonants as well. So, weekly spellings are tested every Friday. Your, they should be written in their home book, homework books and also stuck in at the front. And the way we do our spelling test in year two is through a dictation. So there'll be a short paragraph which we read aloud and we stop at several points throughout the dictation and one of those words to fill in the gap will be one of the spelling words. Spellings will be updated on the website each week as well and they'll also be found on our classroom doors. With the same login for Math Shed, you can also access Spelling Shed to support, support spelling practice at home too. Moving on to our wider curriculum, this is something that as a whole school we have really been focusing on recently. And we have had these wonderful logos designed to represent our different curriculum subjects. So we've got music, art, I am a designer, I am a geographer, etc. And each different wider curriculum curriculum subject has a different logo and we have what we call pupil organisers for each subject which will state what your child is going to be learning in that wider curriculum subject, what key vocabulary we would like them to be able to use by and understand by the end of the unit and then end of unit questions to assess that understanding throughout. So like I've mentioned, on our website, you will be able to find a lot of information on there, such as our spellings, any class letters. You'll also be able to find a link for our YouTube channel where we may upload some teaching inputs in case of the event of a bubble or partial school closure. And you'll also be able to find any other useful information and ways you can help at home. Just a few key messages we've been asked to communicate. At the moment, we're, we're unable to accept volunteers into the school due to reducing the number of adults on site. Wheatfield Plus and Shine After School Clubs are now continuing as normal and you need to book your children into these in the usual way. And if you do have any questions, you will find myself and Mrs Brown's email address on our website page. And please feel free to email us with any questions. So that was a speedy run through of everything we cover in year two. But as I said, this and the video will be there for you to watch. Thank you very much for listening. Bye.